Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan and today I'd like to talk about this book, Autism, A Very Short Introduction by Uta Frith. And I'd like to just uh, go through um, what this book is about through each chapter, I guess the structure of this book, this little book. Now, like many of the very short introductions, um, I found this book to be a great help in understanding um, the chief characteristics um, of autism. Um, I uh, am a teacher and I sometimes encounter autistic children, so it was very, uh, just a useful, um, I suppose, a brush up on uh, what the, some of the characteristics of autism are. Um, Uta Frith is an expert in the subject. She's the Emeritus Professor of Cognitive Development at the Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience in the University of London, in University College London. Just reading that out the back. Uh, she's clearly uh, someone with uh, a wealth of experience, I believe, um, specialising since the 1960s in this condition. And uh, the book has uh, seven chapters. We begin with a, a chapter introducing us to the range of autistic disorders. Um, and she uses these case examples ranging from classic autism, um, a quite severe case, to uh, a more milder uh, version to someone with Asperger syndrome and uh, you, you become you know aware that autism is on a spectrum you know we, we often hear it don't we the autistic spectrum um, there's a range of autisms if you like and uh, there are commonalities between those different forms of autism people being unable to interact socially um, a second is um, a difficulty in communicating, and a third is the is um, repetitive behaviour and very narrow interests, which uh, can be obsessed over. The second chapter, uh, Frith goes into the history of the um, of the study of autism and Asperger syndrome, and. Um, she talks about the people who inspired her, uh, who taught her, um, and also Leo Kanner and Hans Asperger, who uh, were central in um, identifying what autism is uh, during the Second World War and, and in the years afterwards. Um, and then uh, we move into the third chapter, which is how the, there's been a significant rise in cases of autism, particularly since the condition, of course, has been uh, recognised. And, uh, you know, sometimes a case is diagnosed when they're not really, when people aren't autistic, but they're labelled autistic anyway, for want of a better word. Um, and, you know, Frith talks about the difficulties in uh, diagnosing autism. We then move into the uh, the fourth chapter, and um, Frith talks about how autism is a um, a condition formed in the very early stages of life, uh, gen perhaps genetically um, predisposed, um, but then also some. Um, in the, the brain's development, perhaps there's been some uh, lack of connection between the, uh, perhaps the synapses in the brain. And, um, you know, it's certainly a condition which affects the development of the brain from a very early age. Um, it seems uh, lack of um, development in speech is a symptom, particularly in uh, the second year of life. Um, so there's some interesting um, findings. There's some stuff which hasn't been proved, which seems likely though, there's some speculation. And there's still a, a lot which is not understood about the causes of autism. But it's certainly connected to the brain. And then Frith helpfully goes through what she calls the five big ideas, which um, I found particularly um, interesting and helpful in understanding what autism is. 
And the first um, big idea is the lack of theory of mind in autistic people. Um, that autistic people have trouble reading people automatically. Neurotypical people might um, almost automatically uh, engage with people and know how to uh, interact with people, um, pick up on you know millions of cues and signals and signs from people's body language, uh, the inflections in people's tone, etc. Which autistic people do not find easy and it's not automatic for them. So it's very much a case of them um, really concentrating, I guess, and and it being perhaps um, a very uh, great effort to um, really read someone. And, you know, I think somebody in there, um, a quote from an autistic person says, a lot of it's done in hindsight, you know, after they've met someone, they can sit down and work out uh, what the cues and the signs and the signals were as was trying to communicate to them. So that's very interesting. Uh, then the second big idea is the lack of need to be social. Um, you know, they, they perhaps don't value friendships and uh, close relationships uh, as highly or as, or as essential as um, neurotypical people. They're very comfortable on their own. And um, quite an interesting comment that uh, almost uh, incidentally made that perhaps autistic people might find aspects of growing older easier, you know, particularly into old age when people around them start dying, perhaps they're more attuned to living by themselves. The third big idea is the broken mirror theory, um, where autistic people tend to have difficulties uh, copying people and that goes with their um, emotions as well a degree of empathy if you think about empathy being able to think of yourself in one's shoes and try and live through that memory or that emotion vicariously I guess um, autistic people struggle with that um, as they can do with physical actions as well so a difficulty in copying the fourth um, big idea is this weak central coherence. Um, having an inability to understand the big picture, but getting obsessed in detail. And the final big idea is uh, what Frith calls executive dysfunction, where um, autistic people struggle to regulate their behaviours often. You know, and I, I, I see that uh, in the educational context amongst young children, sometimes the, uh, the difficulty in um, behaving in an acceptable way, in, in, in a, a way which their peers might think is acceptable. Um, and this, of course, goes on into adulthood. And she talks about a case study of a, a chap wanting a girlfriend, but then being unable to kind of leave her alone and perhaps stalking her at a distance, you know, behaviour which can seem quite um, worrying, even threatening, certainly antisocial. And it's something that they, uh, autistic people, really struggle with. Um, she also talks about, uh, throughout the book, about Asperger's syndrome and, you know, should that be regarded as a different... Um, condition or is that just a, a you know a less severe form of autism and then she has a conclusion which wraps up um, everything she discusses throughout the book so I found this to be a very interesting uh, and thought-provoking read and certainly a helpful one um, a concise reminder uh, of what the traits of autism can be in people because it's one of those conditions which seems to lack uh, clear boundaries and you know what is and what isn't autistic I guess um, is sometimes open for debate or people can be deemed autistic when they're not really at all.
So it's helpful to get to know a bit more about this condition and uh, I recommend this book. Thanks for watching. Bye.